प्राप्तो यस्परित कृपया श्री गुरु तम न तोस्मि गुरवे गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय इतराले कृष्णाय कृष्णा भक्ता तार भक्ता Secondly, I have my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Prabhupada. And finally, I have my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis when you come. And especially, I have my pranam to Damodar Prabhu, who is doing so much seva. To manifest this transcendental holy dam here, apparently very very far away from Brindavan, but Brindavan has manifested here. <laughs> what is the essence of all the teachings of the Vedic scriptures? If you examine very closely, you will see that the purpose of the scripture is the transformation of our subhav, our nature. We have acquired by the association of material energy a nature which is foreign to our soul. Purushaha prakriti stohi bhunte prakriti jan gunan karnam guna sangosya sada sad yoni jan maso. In Gita, chapter 13, Sri Krishna explains when the Atma, the soul, is situated in prakriti, in this material energy, which is oscillating in three modalities, sattva, Rajas, passion, 
and tamas, darkness, ignorance. Then the Atma tries to taste, tries to enjoy the various modulations of the material energy. And in this way, he associates with different degrees of sattva, different degrees of tamas, different degrees of rajas. And due to that association, sadasat doni janmasu, sometimes he takes birth in a higher position, such as in the Brahminical culture. Sometimes he takes birth in a lower position, in uncivilized places. Sometimes he, his consciousness goes very low and he wanders throughout the animal kingdom. So this nature is acquired, this swabhav is acquired. But when we hear Ved Shastra and follow the teachings of the Vedas, we take shelter of the lotus feet of Guru and make our heart, mix our heart completely with the heart of the spiritual master, then gradually our swabhav begins to transform. The impressions that we've acquired from the material energy are gradually dissipated. And the Adi Sanskar, the original nature of the soul, begins to awaken. Just see. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went from Puri and was traveling to South India, he came on the bank of Godavari River and he was sitting in meditation. Just then, he could hear the chanting of Vedic mantras and hundreds of Brahmins coming in a procession with musical instruments playing and the great fanfare. He looked and he saw, ah, must be Roy Ramananda. In the kingdom of Maharaj Pratapurudra, Roy Ramananda was the governor in that place, Raja Mahindri. Mahabhu saw him. As soon as he saw him, his heart was running, wanted to run to him at once. But he thought that it would be inappropriate. He's being a very powerful politician and a worldly man by all external estimation. And Mahabhu being a sannyasi, it would not be appropriate. Not like today, when sannyasis, they run after anyone who has money. Shastra has forbidden it. So Mahapu could not go near him. Param param jiga gyasu bhavasa garasya sangsari nam vishay nirmata yushtamsa ahanta hanta vishpachnaya tukpe sahadu. Mahapu used to teach. For a renounced person to associate with a worldly person is worse than drinking poison. So it would set a very bad example. He sat still. Roy Ramananda took his ceremonial bath and he looked and he saw this very beautiful young golden sannyasi there. And he came away from the others and approached him and fell flat on the ground giving Dandavat Pranam. So when he got up, Mahabhu said, Oh, you must be Roy Ramananda. Savabom Bhattacharya told me about you and coming here, I wanted to meet with you, but now, by Krishna's mercy, it happened without any endeavor. Savabom Bhattacharya said, yes, Sarabom Bhattacharya, even though he's staying very far away from me, he always thinks about my benefit and welfare. This is why he sent me to you. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Rai met together, Mahaprabhu was glorifying Rai Ramananda. How fortunate I am to see you. And this was Sava Bhoma Bhattacharya's mercy on me that I see you. And Rai Ramananda was glorifying Mahaprabhu and telling, oh, actually he told you to meet with me to give mercy to me because he's very kind to me. So you must be Roy Ramananda. 
not letting them realize that I am a Shudra. Because he was cast from cast the family of Orissa. So they considered to be the lowest caste. I am a Shudra. And I am your unqualified servant. Chitani Mahapu said, Kiba Bipra Kimanyasi Sudha Kenina Ye Krishna Tattva Veta Se Guru Hoi It doesn't matter whether one is a Brahmin, a Shudra, Sanyasi or anything. Anyone who knows Krishna Tattva, he is Guru. Mahapu said, as for me, I am a Mayavadi Sanyasi. So Mayavadi Sanyasis, they are impersonists. No one can be more devoid of bhakti, devotion, than a Mayavadi Sanyasi. Because they consider that all variety is illusion. And therefore, there is no entity to have love for any other entity. Their very philosophy is the antithesis of love. So Mahaprabhu, in a very humble mood, is, I am a Mayavadi Sanyasi. I don't know anything about Bhakti. I want to hear from you. So what is the teaching here? Hmm? Ravananda Rai is so learned and rasik. Mahaprabhu is so qualified and advanced in all ways. Indeed, he's the Supreme Lord himself, playing the role of a devotee. And when to meet, they criticize themselves and glorify each other. Just see their subhav. This is the nature of a Vaishnava, saint, a sadhu. But what do we do? When we come together, we glorify ourselves and criticize others. Exact opposite. Why? Because of envy. This envy. Vaishnava is a well-wisher of every living entity, not some or Like Ambarish Maharaj, Dabasu Rishi tried to kill him. But Ambarish Maharaj was praying for Devasarishi's benefit and well-being. Aho Ananta Dasanam Matam Drashtamadhyame Devasarishi said, Oh, today I have seen the glories of a Vaishnava, of a pure devotee of Krishna. Kritaga Yena Vibraso Though I wanted to kill him, he was praying for my benefit. Mangalani Sami Hase. Vaishnavas are like this. Our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he used to go and sit and listen to Gadara Pandit reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. He used to hear the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj. He's Prahlad Maharaj is standing here at the feet of Lord Nishingadev. So, actually, the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they don't want to develop the frame like Prahlad Maharaj. He has Aishwarya Gyan. Hmm? They want to follow in the footsteps of Prajagopis. So what is the need to listen to seven canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and the life and the teachings of Prahlad Maharaj? Why? No, you must hear it. Srila Bhaktisthan Thakur said, Read the life history of Prahlad Maharaj in Srimad Bhagavatam, not less than 108 times. Why? Because he has a Nirgun Swabhav. Our nature is contaminated by Tamas, by Rajas, by Sattva even. Sattva is also a contamination. But Prahlad Maharaj, he has a Nirgun Swabhav. He is situated in Vishuddha Sattva, pure transcendental existence. 
Each one of his thoughts, each one of his words, each one of his actions is completely transcendental and pure. If you'll hear about him, then our subhav slowly, slowly change. Then we can think about what it means the service of Radha and Krishna. Otherwise, impossible. Shukadeva Swami has spoken Srimad Bhagavatam. He is the parrot of Radharani. And he is speaking to Prakshit Maharaj. Prakshit Maharaj, his Swarupi is a gopi of Vrindavan. So why did Shukadeva Swami tell us times of Prahlad Maharaj? To show the example that the highest transcendental plane, you cannot jump at once. But one has to transcend his lower nature. When the chitta is pure, then you can do smaran. Chudei cha ananta karane smaranam kuryat. Jiva Goswami said, if your heart has become shuddha, purified by hearing, chanting and remembering, by surrender and service to Guru and Vaishnavas, after that you can engage in smaranam. Otherwise, you will engage only in kalpana, imagination, not in <coughs> transcendental smaran. Smaran means that the vritti of Swarup Shakti is reflected on the pure heart, and gradually Krishna's form and qualities and associates begin to awaken in the heart. The smaran of the Vaishnavas is not kalpana, imagination. All is manifest apart from the vibration of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, He, He, Ram, I want to tell one very beautiful history of Srimad Bhagavatam, of the transformation of Subhav, of one wicked and envious person. One day, see Krishna, the six-year-old cowherd boy, with his very beautiful and charming associates, the cowherd boys. They were playing in the forest of Prandavan. It was summertime, it was very hot. And the boys, Krishna's friends, they were feeling thirsty. And they quickly ran on to the bank of the Jamuna to quench their thirst in the cooling waters of the Jamuna. So they came and they sipped the water. And at once, they all fell unconscious, as if dead. Why? Because the water of that lake, Rad, it was a Rad. Rad means when a river is flowing, sometimes just off to one side there's a lake connected to the river. That Rad had become poison because of the presence of a very ferocious uh, demonic snake with a thousand hoods, Kalia. So they drank that water and died. Krishna came there and he looked very compassionately towards them. And there was Amrita nectar in his glance. And suddenly the boys came back to consciousness just by the glance of Krishna, <coughs> opened their eyes wide and looked at each other. He said, when Krishna was born, at that time, Gaga Chaja, the great Brahmin from the Tura came and performed his name giving ceremony. At that time, Gagacharya said, this boy, Krishna, will be the cause of all auspiciousness for the coward people of Gokul. And by his grace, everyone will very easily cross beyond all obstacles. 
And therefore it was Krishna. By his glance, he has brought us all back to life. All the, all the coward boys, they were overwhelmed, they looked at Krishna very lovingly. They never thought he is Bhagavan. They never thought that he is God. They just knew Gagacharya said, somehow or other, because of his presence, everything will be all right. Everything will be auspicious. And they thought, sometimes he does astonishing things, but he's not doing it. It's because his pops, his father, worships Lord Narayan. And by, on the strength of Nanda Maharaja's worship of Lord Narayan, sometimes Narayan enters into his son and he does some miraculous things. But Krishna, he's just like us. He's just one of us. So then, Krishna, he thought, now it's time to deal with this wicked snake, Kalya. He had poisoned the lake so much that the waters of the lake were boiling and fumes were rising up from the water. Even a bird flying overhead in the sky, being touched by those fumes, would immediately die and drop into the water. The grass and trees on the bank all shriveled up and died away. So Krishna, he thought, now I have to deal with this Kaliya Naga. So he climbed one Kadamba tree and he tightened his belt and he tied his hair and then and when he counted the wrestlers before they fight, they slapped their muscles. So Krishna was in a playful fighting mood and slapped his muscles and jumped. When he jumped into the lake, then it, it caused huge tidal waves, 400 hands high, and the lake overflowed. The boys who were on the bank were running to get away from the overflow. And Krishna began splashing very loudly in the water, just so that Kali would know an intruder had come and was trespassing in his territory. So then Kali, being angry, he began to swim beneath the water and then psh, came up with a thousand hoods. All the boys were watching. Oh, Krishna. They were very, feeling great fear for their friend. His eyes were like molten iron and his nostrils, they were like cauldrons of poison with fumes coming from them. And he had a bifurcated tongue going in and out, a thousand of them. The whole eyes were looking at Krishna. Then suddenly, his head jumped forward and wrapped Krishna up and completely covered him and entangled him and began to squeeze. All the boys, they became stunned. Alas, alas, what is happening to Krishna? <clears throat> and all over, in the sky, on the earth, and in the bodies of human beings, there were inauspicious omens. In the sky, meteors were falling. On the earth, there were earthquakes. And all over Braj, the male persons, the left side of their body was twitching and the left eye. This is an inauspicious omen. Seeing all these inauspicious omens from wherever they were in the village, the bridge passes, they became struck with fear. Huh? Something terrible must have happened. We should go to Krishna at once. And they ran out of the village. And they looked and they saw Krishna's footprints in the sand. And following his footprints, gradually, gradually, they made their way to that place on the bank of Jumna. <clears throat> A question arises. Vrindavan is a divine place. How can anything inauspicious go, take place there? And Krishna is all powerful, Supreme Lord, playing like a child to relish the loving exchanges with his devotees. How can anything inauspicious happen to him? Then, how is it possible that meteors are falling, earthquakes are taking place, people's bodies are trembling? Hmm? Why? Because the devatas, all the demigods, they were watching 
what Krishna was doing. And they realized, oh, in Vrindavan, Krishna is doing human-like pastimes. So from the human perspective, this will be a very dangerous moment. So we should serve Krishna and help him in the performance of his human-like pastimes. So demigods, get ready with the special effects. <laughs> hmm? mm. Meteors. <laughs> One demigod made the meteors fall. Another demigod, earthquakes. <laughs> like this. Indra make, controls your left arm and right arm also. Indra was making the left arm shake like this. So all the demigods, to do a service for Krishna, they had to make it look like it was inauspicious. Otherwise, how will the rasa be relished? So all the bridge buses, gradually, gradually, one by one, and in groups, they arrived on the bank of the Kali Rad. There. When Nanda Maharaj arrived, he was asking the boys, what happened? Did the Kali come out of the water and grab him? and then drag him into the water, or did Krishna himself go into the water? He was trying to talk to the boys, but he saw they were unconscious, there was no answer. Kali is calling them. <laughs> then, the elderly ladies, Madhya Yashoda was there, and she wanted to enter into the water, but her friends, the elderly coward ladies, they stopped her, when they stopped her, she fell unconscious and her breathing stopped. In Srimad Bhagavatam it is said that the elderly ladies, they were singing the glories of Krishna. Seems strange. In an emergency like this, why would you have a kirtan? <laughs> but the inner meaning is, because they saw that Madhya Shoda fainted and her breathing stopped, they thought she was going to die. And the only way they thought to save her life is by chanting Krishna's names and qualities and pastimes. So in anxiety they did this, to revive Madhya Shoda. And Brajagopis. They were looking. Some of them had already had the chance to secretly meet with Krishna, the love of their life, secretly. So now they had just attained their beloved. But now they are about to lose him. And they became completely stunned. Yugaitam nimeshena chakshusha pravishaitam shunyaitam jagat sarva govinda vidhi hey, govinda in separation from you one moment seems to last like thousands of years tears are falling from my eyes like rain in the monsoon season and it seems as if the entire universe is completely empty Desolate, vacant wasteland without you. The situation became very critical. The only thing that saved their life was Balaram. Balaram Prabhu was there. His Guru Tattva. He was smiling. And the rays of his smile just about kept everyone alive. Because Balaram, he knows. Nothing can happen to my brother, he's playing. And Balaram was smiling, he was thinking. He always reclines on me in my form of Ananta Shesh. But he never plays with me like this. And now look how he's playing with this ordinary snake. He never plays with me like that. Balaram was smiling. He said to Nanda Maharaj, Oh, remember the words of Gagacharya. Nanda Maharaj tried to enter into the water, but Balaram stopped him. He said, Gagacharya said, Anena Sarva Durgahani, Yuya Manjas Sarisita. By Krishna's grace, all those Krishnas will be there. No problem can touch us. And Gagacharya also told you, you have to raise this boy and take care of him. So if you go in the poison, you'll die. Then you'll be disobeying Gagacharya. In this way, Balaram tried to give consolation to Nanda Maharaj. So Krishna was held in the coils of Kalya for one muhurta, 48 minutes. For all the bridge passes, it was a very long, long 48 minutes. But seeing that their intense separation had come to the highest point, they could not tolerate anymore. 
So then Krishna began to expand his body. He said, Kaliya, you have shown me your strength, but now I am going to show you a little bit of mine. He began to expand, and Kaliya could not hold him. He broke free from the coils of Kaliya. There was an island in the middle there. And Krishna, he began to run around. As one of Kaliya's heads was coming after him, he went the other way and the other way. And Krishna was circling round and round and round, running, running here and there, and all the heads were chasing him. And he was going round and round for a long time. Kali was becoming tired and dizzy. And then Krishna jumped up onto one of his heads and began to dance. And chanting mantras, he began to kick his heels very heavily on the head of Kaliya. And when another head came up, he would jump onto the next head and he was dancing around in a very beautiful way. All the demigods assembled in the sky and they thought, he's dancing. We've already done the special effects, now we have to do the soundtrack. So then. The Viditaras took their drums and the Gandharas began to sing. And they began to sing the glories of Krishna. Go in the day, go from the sky and Krishna was dancing very very beautifully on the heads of Kali. You see sometimes in India those who are expert dancers they show their skill by dancing on some obstacles. I have seen sometimes in Mathura the dancers that's part of their performance they would come with a big cloth of, of broken glass and just throw it on the ground and then they would dance stamping their feet and kicking everywhere on the broken glass without any cut. So sometimes those who are expert dancers, they do a special performance, sometimes on pots. So now Krishna, he was doing a special dance in the most dangerous place, on the moving surface of the thousand hoods of Kalyanar. Why was he doing this? He was showing off in front of the gopis. <laughs> he wanted to show them, look how I can dance. Would you like to dance with me? Can you dance like this? I want to see. Don't be shy. So in this way, Krishna was enjoying so much, dancing on the head of Kali. And he was kicking his heel so hard. Hmm? Kali's heads were being broken. He became concussed. Blood was coming from his mouth and from his nose. And he was slowing down. He could not fight anymore. Gradually, gradually Kali and Nag, he realized this is no ordinary person. It must be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Why? Krishna can be very heavy. When he was a baby, he opened his mouth and showed his mother all the universes in his belly. So it wasn't a six-year-old boy dancing on the head of Kaliya. All the universes were coming on his head. How great! And Kaliya, he knows, he's already had a, some Boxing with Garuda. So Garuda is very powerful. Garuda slapped him. He's taken one of the best punches of Garuda. But this little boy is hitting much harder than Garuda. So he must be the master of Garuda. That is only one person. Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So then he realized, and in his eyes, some humility appeared. Some regret appeared. Some repentance appeared. Some udasinata, that means indifference. You know, when the mind is very passionate, 
then we're always locked into what's going on around us in the world. And it's really interesting. But when the mind becomes purified, then you lose interest in everything. Because one sees through the superficial illusion of the physical plane. And one only has interest in understanding the soul and one's eternal relationship with God. So he became humble. He became regretful. He became repentant. He became indifferent to being the Lord and enjoyer of the external physical realm. And seeing this mood in his eyes, then his wives, they came forward to approach Krishna. And they kept their children in front. Because before they were thinking, our husband is so wicked. He's such a wicked person. And now Krishna is killing him. Good. It's better he should die. Useless person, bad association. But now, some humility came in his eyes. That means there's a chance he can be a devotee. Without humility, without repentance, anyone cannot begin spiritual life. In fact, Srila Sridhar Swami, he has said, Kripa nimit anutapaha. Kripa nimito nutapaha. It means that when a person feels anutap, repentance, regret, in Sanskrit, regret is anutap. Anu means after, and tap means burning. The burning that comes after doing something wrong, making a mistake, acting arrogantly. So, Siddhaswami is saying, Kripa nimito nutapaha, that when a devotee feels regret and he's burning with remorse and repentance, don't think that after that Krishna will be merciful. No. That feeling of regret, that feeling of remorse is the manifestation of Krishna's mercy. Kripa nimita anutapaha. Nimitta means the cause of that feeling is Krishna's grace. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught in the second verse of Shikshastakam. Nam nam akari bahudani jasava shaktis tatra pitani amatas marne nakala eta trishita bakripa bhagavan mamapi durdeva mitte shamiha janina duraga. My Lord, you are so kind that you have invested all your power, all your beauty, all your sweetness and compassion, everything in the vibration of your holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. But I am so unfortunate that due to my offenses, I feel no eagerness for chanting. So in this verse, Mahapu has expressed the first step in bhajan, in spiritual life, the regret for one's offenses. And the strong faith, the full dependence, not on one's own strength, not on one's own power, but on Vastu Shakti, the power which is fully inherent in the vibration of the Mahamantra, in the sound of Krishna's name. Everything is there. If we think we will realize by our own power when we are chanting, then Nam doesn't manifest. And when we know we are helpless and hopeless and useless, we have no power at all. Then Nam Prabhu begins to manifest his influence within the heart by cleaning away all the darkness of bodily and mental identification, extinguishing the burning of worldly desires and attachments, and brightening the darkness of sorrow and giving the heart joy and relief from the material plane. And then as one goes on chanting, then the taste arises. 
So the wives of Kaliya, seeing the look of remorse in the eyes of Kaliya, then they thought, oh, maybe he shouldn't die after all. If he can be a devotee, then that's better. Because if our husband is killed, then any other powerful Naga snakes, they may come and capture us and violate us. So if we have the protection of Kalyan, he's very strong, he can protect us. And together we can practice bhakti, this is better. So then the wives of Kalya, they began to pray to Krishna. Oh, Sri Krishna! Oh, Swayam Bhagavan! You have punished this wicked snake, and quite rightly so, because you have not done it out of envy, because you are completely impartial. You will not favor your own and go against those who are different from you, or even you will not go against those who are against you. You are completely impartial. They were remembering how Krishna, he had saved Prahlad Maharaj. Though Prahlad Maharaj was the son of a demon. But Krishna didn't care. He saved him. And on the other hand, he killed Narakasur. Though Narakasur was his own son. Narakasur is the son of a Prithivi and the Brahadev. And Krishna killed him. So he never says, you are mine, you are not mine. He's impartial. And he reciprocates with our attitude. Don't wait for Krishna. Don't wait for God to do something in your life. The ball is in your court. He is waiting for you. We have to make effort in our sadhana. We have to make effort to serve the Vaishnavas and glorify the Vaishnavas. Then Krishna, he will reciprocate. But we have to initiate it. That is our responsibility. Everyone has free will. We must not shirk the responsibility of our free will. Every moment we have to choose to surrender. So they prayed, O oh Krishna, you are the master of time and space, the creator of all the universes. You are within and without of all things. How is it that you've been so kind to this wicked snake, Kalya, that you have touched him with your lotus feet? Is it that in a previous life he has practiced sadhana, he has done tapasya and he has given respect to every living entity. Is it in his previous life that he engaged in spiritual activities for the welfare and the upliftment of all the people of the world? Is that why you've become pleased with him? Don't think that the services that you do for Krishna making kirtans, making programs, making preaching centers and temples, and so on, that it goes unnoticed. Don't think so. Those who work in their life for the benefit of others, to bring them on the spiritual path, Krishna, or Gornitai, they see everything. Anyone can estimate the extent of the grace they will bestow. For sure, at some point, be patient. She prayed like this. Finally, she said that the, the wives of Kaliya said, we, we don't know what he must have done. Why? What has this snake done in the previous life that he can have the touch of your foot dust upon his head when even Lakshmi Devi the goddess of fortune she wants this and for this she left Lord Narayan she abandoned Vaikuntha and has been performing austerities for a long time and still she did not attain it 
how miraculous it is. So what can we say? Only we can give our obeisances to you. Namaha Pramana Mulaya Kavaye Shastrayonai Pravittaya Nivrittaya Nigamaya Namo Namaha O oh Krishna, we bow down to you. You are Pramana Mulaya. You are the Mul Praman, the root evidence of Shastra that is Srimad Bhagavatam. The wives of Kali are bowing down to Srimad Bhagavatam. Oh Krishna, you very mercifully appear in the Swarup of Srimad Bhagavatam. When you are here, now you are hearing Bhagavatam. This Bhagavatam is Krishna. Naham Vasami Vaikunte Yoginam Ridayenaja Yatta Gayanti Madhbhakta Tapta Tistam. Krishna said, I don't live in the spiritual world. I am not there in the hearts of the yogis. But where my devotees are doing kirtan, where my devotees are speaking the Grantaraj Shrimad Bhagavatam, Krishna is there. So I said, Namo Pramana Mulaya. Kavaye Shastrayone. I bow down to Kavaye, the great poet Vyasadev, who has manifested Shiva Bhagavatam. Shastriyone, I bow down to you, Krishna. You are the origin of the Vedas. The Vedas have emanated from you. The living entities, all senses and mind, they are limited. And therefore they are incapable of discerning the ultimate reality. But you mercifully come. You give them the Vedas by which they can be guided out from the dense forest of ignorance. Nevrittaya, pravittaya, nigamaya, namo, namaha. I bow down to you, the origin of all the various paths of the Vedas which bring auspiciousness to the living entities. We know that everything that you do, every act that you do is for our benefit. And that anyone who is surrendered to you cannot meet with any inauspiciousness and therefore we surrender to you and we pray. Kindly forgive our husband. All living entities are like your children. So if a child commits an offense to the parent, then at least once they should forgive it. They should not take it seriously. So please forgive him. And they prayed on him on behalf of Kali. Vaishnavira Nivedana Krishna Dayamoy Srila Bhakti no Thakur said, if you pray to Krishna, there's a doubt whether or not he's listening. But if a pure devotee is pleased with our service and he will pray on our behalf, then for sure Krishna will shower his ocean of mercy on that person. So the wives of Kaliya, they were pure devotees. Completely pure devotees. There's a mystery in this Leela. You see, if you associate with a pure devotee, then you receive bhakti. The seed of bhakti will come in your heart. Gradually, gradually, by chanting every day, it will grow and one will be transformed. As the alchemist knows how to transform iron into gold, so similarly, by the mercy of Sri Guru, we become transformed from materialistic consciousness to spiritual divine beings and become associates of Sri Krishna. So, Kaliya, he had the association of so many pure devotees, all the Nagapatnis, his wives, with Param Bhagavat Vaishnavis. So, why didn't he get devotion? Because of Aparai. Offense. By their association, the seed of bhakti came in his heart, but it did not sprout. If you throw a seed on a rock, what will happen? It cannot grow. So though he had the chance and the seed of bhakti came in him, it did not sprout. Because his heart was hard as a rock, because of his many offenses. Poisoning the lake of Kaliya, killing birds and trees and 
grass of Vrindavan, quarreling, fighting with Garuda. And to escape from Garuda, he'd taken shelter of that lake because one sage was meditating underwater there, Sabari Rishi. And he had quarreled with Garuda and cursed him, if you come here, then you'll die. So Kali knew about this, so to escape from Garuda killing him, Kali had taken shelter in that lake. But when Krishna danced upon his head, by the touch of Krishna's foot dust, then the apparats of the, that he had committed, the influence of those apparats was dissipated. And the moment the effect of his apparats was exhausted, then the seed of devotion began to grow and the humility came in his eyes. And he began to realize, this person who's dancing on my head is Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. So be careful. Don't commit any offense. <coughs> Don't criticize any devotee, big or small, even in your mind. The heart will become very hard. And that is not a fertile environment for the very soft and sweet creeper of pure love to grow. So then the wives of Kaliya, they gave pranam to Krishna and Kaliya himself began folding his hands and offered prayers to Krishna. He said, oh my Lord, Vayam kalaha sahutyirya tamasa dirga manyava swabhavo dustajo nata lokanam yadasat graha. Said, Oh my Lord Sri Krishna, Vayam kalaha sahutyirya. I am a very wicked person. I am complete tamasic lazy, angry, and ignorant. Dear Gamanyava, I am very arrogant and proud. And Subhavo Dustyo Nata, this is the subject we're discussing today. He said, it's very, very difficult for anyone to give up their Subhav, the nature they have acquired. It's very <coughs> difficult to change. You try. On January the 1st, you make a New Year's resolution. By January the 3rd, all broken. <laughs> Why? It's extremely difficult to change. Because the soul is tiny. And the force of Maya, the material energy, is vast, is immense. So, we should not really use the word difficult. Better to use the word impossible. Mercy is necessary, the grace is necessary. And therefore, Shastra tells us, Tasmat Gurum Prapadyeta Jigyasu Srayam Uttamam Shabde Paritanishnatam Brahman Upashma Srayam. Therefore, one must take shelter of the lotus feet of a qualified spiritual master and inquire. Not about any worldly subject, but about the ultimate eternal auspiciousness of the soul. Such a guru should be Shabde Parit Nishnatam. Nishnat means expert in Shabda, knowing all the Vedas, Puranas, Upanishads, Bhagavatam, and more than that, the writings of our Guru Varga, the Goswamis. Very expert in all Shastra. And Pare means should have realization. A theoretical speaker, his words have no power. But one who has realized Krishna, then the fragrance of the kumkum from the bodies of the gopis, which is smeared on the feet of Krishna, is floating in the sound of his words. It has a power to touch us and transform us completely. And Brahmanupashamasrayam means that Sri Guru, should be the abode 
of peacefulness, always undisturbed, undisturbed by external things, and especially undisturbed by internal things, undisturbed by any desire or attachment for worldly facility. So Kaliya said, it's very difficult for me for me to change my nature. Oh my Lord, it is your external energy by which the living entities are overpowered. So only by your mercy can they become free from that swabhav. Daivi hiyesha gunamayi mamma maya durattaya mameva ye prapatyante maya meitam tarantite Krishna said, this material energy of three gunas is my maya. So only those who surrender to me, they can cross easily, they can cross beyond it. One should understand that the very fact that Kaliya is saying, I am very wicked and it's very difficult I cannot change my swabhav. The fact that he's saying this means that his swabhav has already changed. Understand? Because he would never say that before. Hmm? What is the mentality of the materially minded person? Ishwaroham, aham bhogi, siddhoham, balabat suki. I'm in charge, I'm in control. I have a grip on the situation. Ishwaroham, aham bhogi. I'm enjoying. I'm perfect. I'm powerful. I'm happy. This is the materialistic mentality. In this world, no one is perfect, powerful, or happy. All are miserable, all are suffering. Only out of ego, only out of pride, they tell, I'm fine. Someone is in an accident in a car, they're lying in their bed in the hospital with their arm in a cast and their leg in a cast and, and then their friend comes and brings them some flowers. How are you? I'm okay. <laughs> Ego is so big. <laughs> so I'm okay. This is Maya, illusion. But when a person said, I'm not okay, I have many problems, I have weaknesses, I have many faults. And I'm being crushed by the weight of my past activities. Hmm. Like Srila Narutam Dastako said, Gaurapahuna bhajiyamayanu Premaratanadana helaya rainu Oh Gaura, by my own fault, Though I was offered the priceless jewel of brain, by my carelessness, I have neglected it and have lost it. Leaving the association of pure devotees, I went to play around in the material energy. And now the noose of my karma is around my neck and it's getting tighter and tighter every day. That means white hairs are coming. Wrinkles are coming. That means the noose of your karma is getting tighter, tighter, and <coughs> finished. Hmm? Understand? Only those who are free from Maya, they can see what's going on directly. My Lord. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, due to engaging in sense gratification when I was young, now I'm older and my body is being attacked by many illnesses. If you engage in sense gratification, drinking, smoking, and, and indulgence in sexual activities, then when you become older, then the body, because the pran, has, which is the basis of the health of the body, has all been uh, disturbed and become erratic, and therefore the body is attacked by many diseases. Srila Bhakti said, Now I am old, and now I want to chant, now I want to serve Krishna, but how can I do it? When I'm being harassed now, the reactions of my past activities are coming for me. 
जय शिशिर तमदार जो की जय सचिनंदन गौरी so when a person sincerely from the heart begins to lament and sees there is not one ray of hope on the horizon he cannot enjoy you cannot enjoy hmm? impossible when the person becomes hopeless and sees the only shelter is the lotus feet of the supreme lord hmm? and then lament Oh, that means that Christ's mercy has already come, and the swabhav has been transformed. Like Roy Ramananda and Mahaprabhu, when they meet each other, very gentle, very humble. Now the heart is a fertile ground, and the bhakti lata can flourish. The devotion can become strong. So then Kali said. My Lord, you can do with me as you will. You can punish me in whatever way you see fit. I deserve it. My pranams to you. And he bowed down with his thousand heads. So then Krishna said, "Kaliya, you must leave this place. Leave Brajimanda and go to Ramanik Dweep. Don't worry about Garuda." When he sees the imprint of my foot on your head, then he'll know. <laughs> There's no need to no, hurt you. So you and all your family, you should leave this place. And Krishna said, if anyone will remember my order of to Kaliya to leave, then there in the morning and evening, then they will never be bitten by a snake. This verse of Shrimad Bhagavatam is actually a mantra. If someone is bitten by a snake, you have to chant this verse of Shrimad Bhagavatam. It will be removed. You don't have to believe it. But more than that, if one remembers Kaliya leaving the lake of Brindavan, when he left, all the poison disappeared, all the trees and plants, everything came alive again. So here in this pastime, then the poison of envy the poison of anger will leave your heart and all the beautiful fragrant flowers of Vrindavan with humming bees and the calling of peacocks will awaken in the heart and then Krishna will play because Krishna never leaves Vrindavan unless the heart becomes like the forest of Vrindavan how will Krishna come there? Krishna has no pastimes in Oakland so then Kaliya and his wives, they came forward and they prayed to Krishna, please, before we leave, let us worship you. Let us offer art to you. Krishna said, that will take a long time. He said, then don't delay, please sit down. And they offered an asana for Krishna and he sat down. And the wives of Kaliya, they came with their children and with sandalwood paste, they smeared sandalwood paste on the body of Krishna. They offered him from their storehouse. They took so many beautiful silks and jewels and decorated him in the most charming and attractive way. And then they offered Arti to Krishna, singing Kirtans. Kaliya said, Oh Krishna, before I was fighting with Garuda as if we were enemies, but now I see him like my elder brother. And I have become the servant of the servant of Garuda. But Krishna, now Kali is very cute. <laughs> Krishna said, I know when you want to go anywhere, you can call Garuda and he can, he will fly and he will take you anywhere. But if ever Garuda has a day off, then just call my name. And from wherever I am in the universe, I will quickly fly there and take you wherever you want to go. So Krishna was pleased with Kali and his wives and family members. He blessed them and then they flew. Before they left, Krishna he had to get from the island onto the bank of Jamuna. So he began to walk. But as he was walking, some of the snakes were swimming under the water and wherever he placed his foot, their heads rose up like that beneath his foot. So when Krishna was, it looked like he was walking on the water. But the heads were coming under like this. 
and he came out from the island across the Jamuna and onto the bank. Then the rest of the serpents, they all flew away. And Nanda Maharaj, Yashoda, the Sakas, the friends of Krishna, they all ran to him. They're in such ecstasy. Actually, in Vedic culture, there's some etiquette. Those who are senior go first, and then the junior, and then the most junior, and then the most junior after them. Mm -hmm. But they were in such a, a great, overwhelmed with waves of jubilation that they forgot all about uh, seniority and inferiority and so on. And the coward boys who should have come last, they came first and jumped on Krishna and embraced him. With great love, and Krishna was embracing his friends, and they were laughing and joking together. All the ladies came around Krishna. Usually, in the crowd, the men they don't mix with the ladies. But Nanda Maharaj, even he could not check himself, and he was pushing the ladies out of the way. And he came to the front and said, "Oh, my son!" <laughs> and in this way, the waves of intense love of all of the bridge passes uh, were rising and rising. And especially Prajagopis were looking at Krishna. Oh, my hero. <laughs> and their romantic feelings were inspired. So in this way, our Sri Krishna, Rasik Shekhar, the embodiment of all rasa, who inundates the hearts of all living beings with intense and sweet love, he performed his pastimes in the most wonderful way. Our mentality is what? That the bad person should be punished and the good person should be rewarded. But this is not Krishna's mentality. Swastiastu visvasya kala prasidatam. This is the motto of Srimad Bhagavatam. May there be auspiciousness for the whole universe and may the wicked people also be happy. So this is Krishna's nature. In his pastimes, he gives mercy to the victims. He also gives mercy to the victimizers also. Everyone. This is Krishna's nature. And when our hearts become pure, it will be our nature. Otherwise, if we are seeing duality, if we have even a slight trace of the spirit of vengeance, then you cannot chant the holy name purely. So Mahapu said, Trinadapi Suni Chena, be more humble than a blade of grass. Hmm? Why? If you step on grass, it bends down. But when you take your foot off, it stands up again. You see, so it has some ego. So Mahapu said, be more humble than grass. No ego, no spirit of vengeance at all. Then, Kirtanya Sadahi, one can chant the pure name and experience the divine pastimes of Krishna here and now in the Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. So everyone, please come tomorrow. Seven o'clock, we have the Kirtan. 7.30 is RT, and after RT, we'll tell whatever happened next in Srimad Bhagavatam. So sing one Bhajan. Prabhu, you said about how Kaliya came in the Vrindam and like, such a holy place, why would he be here? Like I said, like said, he came there because Subhari Rish had given a course yeah, to yeah, yeah. Garuda that and he, he could not come there. So Kali had to go there to get away from her.
सब